I mean, you hear it everywhere. Use get component as sparingly as possible, preferably not at all. And I get it, it's very intensive on the CPU. It's fine for initializing field values in the start method, but once we get to runtime, that's where the problems begin. This rule of using get component sparingly, however, gets violated immediately and almost without fail in one specific instance. Applying damage. I mean, how do you call a take damage function on a component that you don't have a reference to? Short answer, you can't. Or can you? No, you can't. Well, sort of. Let me put it to you this way. You don't need a reference to the instance of the script. You only need a reference to the method that handles taking damage. But how? Well, that's what I'm here to explain. So here in Unity, I've created a fresh sample scene which just has our player and our enemy character. And the important thing is that the enemy should have a collider on it. And the very first thing we're gonna do is go to the layer, add a layer, and I'm gonna call it damageable. And we're just gonna apply that to the enemy. And you're gonna wanna apply this damageable layer to anything in your scene that is damageable. So next up, I'm gonna create a script called damage application system. Let's open it up and delete everything in it. It shouldn't derive from mono behavior and it should be a static class. And in here I'm gonna create a static dictionary of which the key is a collider. And the value, well for the value we're gonna need to use the system namespace and the value is going to be of type action and it's going to take in an integer. Now if you don't know what an action is, you should probably go watch these two videos by Sebastian League. But in short, an action is pretty much just a delegate which has a return type of void and I specified that it should also take in an integer. So basically, any method of which the return type is void and has a singular integer parameter can be loaded into this variable which can then be accessed via the collider key and it will return the method that we loaded into it and then we can invoke that method. If you don't understand it right now it'll probably make more sense once we're done building the system. So I'm just gonna call it dict and call its constructor and I'm gonna create a public static void add method. This is going to take in a collider, call it collider, and it's also going to take in an action which will take in a singular integer. I'm going to call it method. Now in here this is just going to take the dictionary and add the collider and the method meth, method as a key value pair. I'm also going to create a public static void remove, which is just going to take in a collider, called collider, and it's just going to take the dictionary and remove the key value pair based on the collider key that we passed in. We also need a third method, so public static void, whoops, apply damage. And in this one, it's going to take in a collider and an integer, which is going to be the damage amount. And all it's going to do is it's going to take the dictionary, pass in the collider key that we specified. And technically speaking, what we have to do here is say dot invoke and pass in the damage amount. But this can actually be shortened down to just simply this. Because the action is a type into which we loaded a method, which we can then invoke like this. So let's go back to Unity and create a new script called damageable. Let's open it up, delete everything. We're gonna need a couple variables here. We're going to need a serialized 
int called max health and also an integer called current health. And also I'm going to specify above the class that it's going to require a component of type collider so that anything that we attach this script to is going to have to have a collider as well because it's going to need to have a collider so that we can hit it with a raycast or a projectile. So then we're going to need a reference to it, the collider I mean, and I'm going to say, let's call it hitbox. And theoretically, this should be an abstract class because everything that is damageable in your game should be deriving from this class. And then you should implement a protected abstract void called take damage, which then just takes in an integer and that's going to be the damage amount. Now, theoretically, this is what you would do so that everything that derives from the damageable class will have to override the take damage method and implement a way for it to take damage. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not gonna create a separate class for that. I'm just gonna attach this script directly. So then in the take damage method, we're just gonna take the current health and subtract the amount from it. And we can even log it, so debug.log current health and then if the current health is less than or equal to zero we're gonna destroy this game object that this script is attached to. Now we need to implement the awake method and well I actually prefer using the awake method over the start method but what we're gonna do here is just set the current health equal to max health to initialize it and then we're going to access the damageable app, sorry, damage application system and add the hitbox and the take damage method as a key value pair. And we're also going to need to implement the on destroy method. And in the on destroy method, when the game object gets destroyed, we access the damage application system and simply remove the key value pair based on the hitbox. So let's go back to Unity and apply the damageable script to the enemy. We're gonna set his max health to 100 and the collider is just gonna be the capsule collider. Now let's create a script for the player. So I'm just gonna call it player for the sake of the tutorial. Let's open it up. And in here, we're gonna need a couple fields. I'm gonna serialize an int field called damage amount. We're gonna need a layer mask called damageable mask. And we're also gonna need a reference to a transform, which is going to be our raycast origin. So I'm just going to implement the awake method really quickly. And all I'm going to do is set the cursor's lock state. I said the lock state equal to cursor lock mode locked. This basically just makes our cursor invisible when we enter play mode. It's not actually part of the system. So then in the update method, we're going to create an if statement and say input dot get key down key code dot mouse zero. So basically the system is just looking for an input from the left mouse button. So in here, we're going to create another if statement which is going to be our raycast and the raycast origin is going to be the raycast origin dot position and the raycast origin dot forward is going to be the direction we're going to need an out 
Raycast hit hit. And this is the funny thing, is that you never really hear anyone mention this, that you can actually declare the Raycast hit variable inside the if statement. So you don't need to predefine the Raycast hit before the if statement and then pass it in as an out parameter. So the distance is gonna be mathf.infinity and the layer mask is gonna be the damageable mask. So then if we shoot a ray and hit a damageable layer, we're gonna access the damage application system and say apply damage based on the hit.collider and we're gonna pass in the damage amount. So that's pretty much the entire damage system done, so now let's try and break it down. So when any instance of the damageable script first gets initialized in the scene, it calls the awake method, it sets the current health to max health, and then it adds itself, well its hitbox, and the take damage method to the damage application system's dictionary. So now based on the collider that's attached to the damageable script, we're going to be able to access its take damage method without having to use get component to access the damageable instance. So when we press the left mouse button, we shoot out a ray, and if we hit a damageable layer, we're going to pass in the collider that we hit into the damage application system, pass in the damage amount, and that's just gonna access the value corresponding to the key that we passed in and invoke the method passing in the damage amount. So the take damage method corresponding to that collider that we hit is gonna be called, it's gonna take damage, and if the health drops to zero or below, it's gonna destroy the game object, which calls on destroy, which then just removes the key value pair with the specified hitbox so that the dictionary doesn't get cluttered up with values that are non-existent anymore. So let's go back to Unity, select our player, attach the player script, let's say, let's steal 50 damage, we're gonna look for the damageable layer, and the Raycast origin is gonna be the main camera. So let's go into play mode, and if we play and left click, you can see that it logged the damage to the console. Well, not the damage, but rather the current health of the enemy. So if we click again, its health goes to zero, game object gets destroyed, and the system is working. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not even that complicated of a system. So if it was helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment, and get yourself subscribed, because I'm probably going to be doing more of these tutorials in the future. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.